Welcome, welcome, welcome to Past Psych Tonight. I'm your host, esteemed <laughs> Professor Steve Roth, or as I'm commonly known, a bargain bin Paul Rudd. So, without the money, without the talent, without the good looks, and without the name, but with added digestive issues. So, oh, thank you so much for joining us. Now, our main story tonight concerns a statistical relationship known as correlation. So, what is a correlation? What types are there? And how are they frequently misused? A correlation is research that examines the relationship between two numeric variables. So we're talking about numbers, or variables that give numbers as data. Participant scores or measurements are taken for two different items or variables, and the type of relationship between these two number sets is examined. Let's say that I ran a correlation with everyone watching. I might ask each of you to give me your height in inches, which would be variable one, and your weight in pounds, which would be variable two. I could do a correlation to see the relationship between these. Now, I would anticipate that as your height increases, so does your weight. You'll notice I ask for numeric variables, variables that generate numbers. I would not ask you your favorite color, the model car you drive, or which Muppet you think is hottest. I might also do a correlation with variable one being age and variable two being GPA. I would ask for everyone in my sample to give me both of these statistics. After collecting this information, I'd start to look at the relationship between variables. In other words, as age increases, does GPA increase? Does it decrease? How are these related? That's what we're doing with a correlation. There are two main types of correlations to talk about, positive and negative. A positive correlation is one in which the two variables change in the same direction. As one increases, the other increases, which also means that as one decreases, the other decreases. Some examples of positively correlated variables would be hours studied and GPA height and weight, Taco Bell outings, and toilet paper roll purchases, and lastly, Ponderosa Steakhouse trips and happiness level. Let me explain this. Family night each month as a kid for me was Ponderosa. And you know what? While they haven't updated their menu in 50 years, there are some things that are merely perfect exactly as they are. Like fire, the speed of light, the chemical composition of water, and yes, Ponderosa recipes. Applause, applause for the great steaks at Ponderosa. A negative correlation is one in which the two variables change in opposite directions. As one increases, the other decreases. So some negatively correlated variables would be course absences and GPA, miles ran per week, and body weight, age, and TikTok uploads, or the number of self-indulgent video lectures that Professor Ross gives you to watch, and the number of meaningful relationships that you'd estimate that he has in his life. <laughs> now, with huge data sets, how can we tell if variables are positively or negatively correlated? You can't just eyeball it and decide if it looks like the variables move in the same or opposite directions. No, what you'd have to do is you gotta enter your data into a stats program and then compute a value called a correlation coefficient. A correlation coefficient is a number that ranges from negative one to positive one, and it tells you about the relationship between your variables. A positive number means a positive relationship between the variables, like ponderosa <laughs> and happiness. While a negative number would mean a negative relationship, like course absences and GPA. So this number tells you about the strength of that relationship as well. Right? So numbers close to zero, either positive or negative, they mean the relationship is weak. 
and might represent variables with no relationship, like the number of Willem Dafoe films that you've seen and McRib purchases. <laughs> By the way, an AI drawing program generated this grotesque image when I entered Willem Dafoe eating a McRib. Technology is a grand thing. I hope that these image is cameo in your nightmares for years to come. May they haunt you for as long as I know that they're gonna haunt me. Anyways, it's difficult to accurately predict anything with weak correlations like the one I just talked about. Whereas numbers that are further from zero and they're closer to one or closer to negative one, now that means you have a relationship between the variables that is stronger and we actually you know, can do something with those. We can use someone's value on one variable to more accurately predict where they'd fall on the other. But I would like to give a word of caution with correlations. Correlation <laughs> does not equal causation. Just because two variables are correlated doesn't mean they cause one another to occur. For example, let's say that I looked at the shoe sizes and SAT scores of elementary and junior high children. What I would find is that as shoe size increases, so does SAT score. Those are strongly positively correlated variables. Does this mean shoe size causes SAT score? Right? Should I tell parents, you know what? Don't waste your money on SAT prep books. Don't send your kids to SAT prep classes. What you gotta do, buy your child the biggest damn pair of Crocs you can find and they're gonna destroy that test. They're gonna crush it. No. There's a third variable that likely explains this correlation, and that third variable is age. It's simple. As students get older, both their shoe size and their SAT score is going to increase. Now, I also want to make note that correlation doesn't guarantee you specific data. My friend Tyler here, right? <laughs> he wore a size 13 when he was in eighth grade. And I used to see Tyler eating massive amounts of paper. He's not a smart guy. In fact, the reason people don't get yellow pages anymore is because he ate them all. <laughs> By the age of 31, Tyler was 410 pounds. 230, which is pure paperweight. He gobbled so many reams that several doctors, they were brought in by the CDC. The man can't go out and rain, and he can't eat glue, or he'd become paper mache. Now, even if you could infer causation from correlation, which you cannot, which direction would it go in? For instance, if intoxication level were positively correlated with number of freestyle dance moves, is the drinking causing the dancing, or are we drinking more to celebrate those sick moves? Now finally, I'd like to share the most famous example that illustrates why we absolutely can't say that correlation equals causation. Ice cream cone sales are strongly positively correlated with the murder rate, meaning that as ice cream cone sales rise, so does murder. Does this mean that if you're overdoing it on the mint chocolate chip, it's going to make you bloodthirsty for murder? Or will committing murder make you crave some Cherry Garcia? Ugh. I'm all tuckered out for manufacturing ghosts. It's time to kill my two favorite guys, Ben and Jerry. No, the explanation here is simple. Ice cream cone sales will increase in the summer and murders will also increase in the summer. The third variable that explains this is temperature. Now think about it. Of course murders rise in the summer. How inconvenient is it to murder someone in the winter? You gotta <laughs> scrape ice off your car. You gotta wait for the windows to defrost. You gotta drive carefully over to your target. You gotta make sure you watch out for the black ice. You don't wanna hit a patch of black ice. Ugh. You know what? Wait till the summer and then kill that son. <laughs> and now, this. And now, more spurious correlations courtesy of Tyler Vegan.
All right, that's our show. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope we're back again soon. Good night. <laughs>